Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston, and today we are going to talk about um, combinations. Uh, so if you ever took a math class in college, you'd know what a combination is. You might have looked at something like um, NCR uh, or something like that. So what this basically means is um, a combination is a selection of items from a collection such that the order of selection does not matter. So the order in which you select the items and place them in the bucket or in the, in, in the, in the line does not matter, unlike permutation. So how does this actually work? So let's take an example. So let's say you have uh, three items. Let's say you have A, comma B, comma C, three items where you can select from, and you have to generate basically um, something like two things. So here N is equal to three, and R is equal to two. So from three items, you need to make two combinations, or uh, a combi combinations of length two. So uh, the combinations I can make are obviously a comma b, b comma c, a comma c, um, you know, and a comma a, b comma b, c comma c, and so on and so forth. So um, as you can see, the the thing that happened over here is I also included double a and double b and double c in the in the combinations. Uh, the reason I did that is because um, there are also combinations in their own right. I mean, sure, mathematics would not, you know, agree with this, but yeah, I mean, they could be considered as combinations in itself, because here the order does not matter, and this is basically including repetition. So you include repetition in this case, um, but obviously they won't be, you know, valid in some other case. But it depends on your application anyway. So there's A, B, B, C, and A, C, and, and you want to generate like you want to, so you can do this with repetition or without repetition. So this program does both. So let's talk about how this program actually uses logic uh, and, and does it. So let's take, uh, an, uh, let's take the same example. You have the sets uh, A comma B comma C. So the program basically starts at, sub, at, at a point and calls the recursive function on at every single moment, you have, it calls it on A, B, and calls it on C. Then again does the same thing, A, B, and C. Then does the same thing again, A, B, and C. Then A, B, and C. So it calls itself on every single element that you basically append. And what happens is, uh, let's say here your R equal to two, once you reach R equal to two, your length is satisfied. So you don't need to go any further and then it basically starts generating um, the combination. So you have A, A over here, A, B over here, A, C, B, A, B, C, um, B, B and B, C. And then it makes a list of all those combinations. And then if you want to go uh, and do it without repetition or without and, and following the paradigms of mathematics, then you can just eliminate the ones you don't need. It's as simple as that. So you generate all these combinations, all these random combinations through recursive tree, through a recursive tree. And then when you reach your length or desired length, some of them, some of the combinations you just don't need. So you check for them and you remove them from the list of the array. That is the simplest way of doing this. And that's exactly what we're going to follow in this tutorial. So, uh, so let's start with, um, without repetition. So, Here's your array. So the array is composed of A, B, C, and D. I call the function combinations with repetition on this array. I pass in the array and I pass in also a temp array, not temp, it's temporary, T-E-M-P, a temp array, which I'm going to use in the function call. And this is basically your R. So what is the length of the combination that you want to create? So I pass this in and let's go to where this is right now. So this is over here. This function call is over here. So combinations. So what we are doing right now is basically generating combinations with repetition. So you're gonna see values like a a b b c c in these in these ones over here. So if length of temporary is equal to equal to r is what it starts with. So initially temporary has no length. It is basically an empty list. So it's zero and three. Obviously this does not get satisfied. So what you basically do is you go over here into the else statement and say for x in range of zero comma length of array temporary dot append x uh, array of x. Now this makes very little sense. Now what does this actually mean? So for uh, for comparison's sake, x goes from zero to four. 
because the length of the array is 4. Now the temp array or the pen array of x takes the first element of array of x and puts it into temp. So now temp array is uh, basically is a. So this is what temp array is. Now what it does is it says uh, call the function but this time pass in array and temp array and r again. So array is the same thing as it was before. Now temp array is equal to this one and r is the same. It's 3. So what happens is you go back into this function call definition over here and then here length of temporary is equal to one right and one is equal to three of course not so it goes into the else again and then you go in the for loop again so you say x in range of zero comma length of array what basically happens is uh you append a again to temp so you have a then you have a again right you have an a twice and then what happens is you say combination with repetition and passing the same thing again so you have this time this time with the temporary you have a uh, a and A, and then you pass it again and, and you go back into the combination with repetition. And you pass it in and it comes back over here. And this time, if you check, you still start with X in range of zero. But this time, what happens is you have three elements in the temporary because you have appended it again. So in the temporary, you have A, comma A, comma A. And then what basically happens is once you pass that again in the temp, you come over here and this time, temp, length of temporary is three equal to equal to r which is also 3 but what what ends up happening is this is true instead of this so you basically two combinations you have pen so combinations is basically a global a list that we created and and this part over here is basically a way of converting a list into a string so this basically converts list to string so your first a uh, string that you're going to put into your array of combinations is a a a done that's it so that, that that's what happens now once this is executed what happens you're not going to return anything it doesn't return anything what it basically does is it starts executing from the last stack so where was the last function call that happened the last function call happened over here Right? What was the function call on? The function call basically was, you know what the value of the array is. Temporary was equal to a comma a comma a, and r was equal to three. Now, once the control of the function returns back to this part over here, it just starts executing from the next line. And what's the next line? The next line basically says temporary dot pop length of uh, length of temporary minus one. So this basically means pop the last element so if you pop the last element of what temporary what's happening temporary was equal to a comma a comma a now if you after you pop it it becomes a comma a because the last element is eliminated the last element is eliminated and that's why you get over here now your temporary is equal to a comma a and when you go back into the for loop because after this line, what's going to happen? It's going to go back into the for loop and x is going to be equal to 1. x is going to be equal to 1. So, temporary or append array of 1. And what is array of 1? Array of 1 is b. So now your temporary is equal to a, comma a, comma b. And then when you pass it again into the temporary, oh, sorry. And when you pass it again into the temporary, what basically happens is, your, your your temporary is a comma a comma b and this is equal to three and this is also equal to three and then you basically add another item to your combinations so the same thing is happening again you go back over here you pop the last element you add c to it and then your next uh, installment is aac and then what happens is this gets popped out again because you know uh, that's just how it's supposed to work. so then you have aac so you come back over here you pen this and then you go back over here, you pop the last one, you pop A8, and then you go back because the last thing you called after this was supposed to be something like even less than that. So you have A and then B, and then you have ABA, and then you have A, uh, B, B, and you have A, B, C, and so on and so forth. So it's just a recursive tree what that, that, that forms over and over again. So if you still don't get it, I recommend you get a piece of paper and write it down because it's very simple, it's very simple. So what this basically generates is, it generates something like AAA, AAB, 
AAC, ABA, ABB, ABC, and, and so on and so forth until the end of time. So, so now you have what you have essentially done is you have generated combinations which are ridiculous. Like they are like massive amount of combinations with repetition, with repeating elements. Now what you need to do is you need to filter them. You need to filter them. So to filter them, what do you do? To filter them and make them the correct amount of combinations that are mathematically acceptable. So in order to filter them, this is what uh, this is the function I wrote: combinations without repetition. It's the same. It's it's kind of the same function. It takes the same um, parameters in, and what it basically does is it has the same uh, a for loop. It has the same for loop, but what it basically does best is it adds a couple of um, you know conditions which do not allow every every particular generated set to enter the combinations list. So not every element is going to be every uh, you know combination you generate is going to be counted. Only the ones that actually matter are going to be counted. So let's let's take a look at that. So the first uh, you know so the first condition is if not array of x in temporary. Now what does this mean? Now let's take an example. Let's say you have something like a and this is your temporary. Okay, now when uh, we talked about A being added to the temporary again, you basically add a condition to check if the element A is already inside of temporary, then don't add it. That's what basically this line does. If an element called A is already inside of the temporary, then this does not get added. So basically you cannot now generate combinations like AAA. You cannot generate combinations like uh, B, B, C. No, because if you add B once, you cannot add a B again. That's what this condition does. If not array of X in temporary, if the array of X that you're appending to the temporary, if it already exists in the temporary, then you cannot add it. That's what. That's the first condition. That will limit uh, the, the, the list of elements a lot. Cool. Next is, uh, what you do is the second condition that you want to like very stressfully uh, execute is if you have something like a b c and you have something like c b a right now permutation wise of course they are different the order is different but if you think about combinations in combinations the order does not matter the order does not matter um, so this and this is supposed to be equal they're supposed to be the same combination. So we cannot include uh, them twice. We cannot because that is not possible. We cannot include them twice. So in order to not do that, we need to uh, create a condition which basically equates two lists and checks whether the elements inside both of them are the same. So there's a very simple way of doing that in, um, in Python. The way you do that is you use something like set. So what set does is it takes a list. So set basically takes a list and converts it into a, a set and then you can equate two sets and check if the elements are the same so the, the thing is that the way two sets are equal is if they have the same elements in them not the same amount of like both the same amount of elements and the same elements itself without the order so that's what you do you take a list a uh, temporary is a list you, you plug in you pass it into the set it generates a set same thing you can convert your combination whatever you are searching for and, and, and you basically convert it into a set uh, first and then that's what happens. So, so one thing that I want to talk about is that uh, when you append uh, something into the combinations, you're essentially converting it into a, a string, right? You're converting it into, into a string. Uh, to convert into a set, first of all, you need to convert the string to a list. So we convert the string to a list and then we convert the list to a set and then check with the uh, temporary that we are dealing with and check if uh, the temporary is valid is valid and then if it is valid um, you know you add it in so the first thing is check if combination exists if the combination exists which means even if without the order the combination exists so we go through each of the combinations and check if the set of combinations is equal to the set of temporary if it is equal it means that the combination exists which we basically pass the flag the flag sets itself um, combination exists is true and if uh, if there was even one true setting if if there was even one time where the combination existed in the set then you basically cannot append it simple 
and if not combination exists which basically means if combination exists uh, is equal equal to false then you know you can basically add it to your um, combinations and that's just how this algorithm works so that's how this basically works now let's take an example let's uh, run this code and see what happens so this is the code over here in vs code so I'm gonna run it and uh, run Python file and yeah so over here if you see this is the one without repetition and this is the one uh, so this is the one with with repetition you see so many combinations being created and this is the one without repetition so um so that's about it for this video thanks for watching guys i hope you got this concept it's very simple it's very straightforward if you didn't understand it please watch the video again and uh, you know share um this video with people who want to know how to write combination programs with uh, python and i will see you in the next one please like share and subscribe to the channel because that helps the channel grow a lot and i will see you in the next video peace